Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon is growing all over the world. This is episode number 424. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hello, everybody. I'm truly excited to be in here this morning. I woke up at 3 this morning praying, and um, this is usually the time of year I kind of get a breakthrough because I spend December, January um, just, you know, seeking God on show me anything in me. I've been, you know, reading books and uh, doing everything I can to to find out the different um, spirits that can oppress people. And I've just been, you know, seeking in anything I could find to make sure that I'm cleansed before him because I, I don't consider this uh, the new year yet. You know, we're still on the, the in the 11th month. And so I've always found if I'll just use December and January as cleansing months and just press it into God that usually he'll give me um, – you know, kind of like my operating orders <laughs> for the year. And got up this morning, and it's bright outside. We've come out of the cold tundra. It's warming up. So it's a great day to be alive, isn't it, sweetheart? <laughs> it is, and I'm glad this Arctic blast is over, although I think we may still have another invasion from Canada before the well, winter's it, over with. I can't imagine we'll get through February without more cold weather, but we're getting a break here, and so we're blessed by that. Um, you know, as I've been seeking God, uh, he's been talking to me about religious spirits. And so I've, I've been trying to do some research, been trying to, you know, figure out exactly what all that entails. And, you know, one of the, back when uh, in Matthew 23, the religious spirits were with the scribes and the Pharisees. They were. And so um, verse 13 says, uh, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. And we know that this is talking about, you know, uh, coming against the believers in, in Jesus. But I think it also is just the perpetual um, schemes of these religious spirits to keep people from entering the kingdom, from keeping people from relationship with the Messiah and to get caught up in this religious system. Oh, absolutely. Any, and I, I think the modus operandi is still the same. It's anything to keep you away from the real Jesus. There are a lot of people today that say they serve Jesus, but you've got to stop and ask which Jesus, you know, is it the woke Jesus, is it the prosperity Jesus? Uh, we have more versions of Jesus than we do. Uh, Carter has liver pills. In fact, Jesus warned us. He said, he said listen, in the last days there are many of those that will come in my name, and say that I am the Christ and deceive many. Now, years ago, I heard that preach that many are going to say they're going to come and they're going to say that they're Jesus and they're going to point people a different direction. But I, I think what if you actually read it in context, he was saying, listen, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to come in my name and say that I'm really the Christ, but they're going to present another gospel. They're mm -hmm. going to present another version of me. And my goodness, have we ever had that done? Oh, my goodness, uh, Historically, yes. go, going all the way back mm -hmm. to the Catholic Church where they had uh, confused Mithra with, uh, with Jesus. And in fact, Constantine simply considered Jesus another version of Tammuz, Mithra, what have you. And it was, it was very um, politically powerful for him to uh, trap everything with Mithra worship because Mithra worship was... Uh, very, very popular among the Roman soldiers, which he needed to first conquer Rome and, and take over and establish his dynasty. Well, and if we look at our calendar, you know, because everybody now says we're in the new year, and so everybody's kind of focused on that, but boy, I, I think we're ending up things. And this is when I believe God can give us downloads on what we need to pray for his coming year here. And, um, you know, we're getting ready to come up um, February 1st through the 2nd, which is called Candle Mass. And it, you know, if you look at where the, the Catholic Church did this, they said that uh, these were the 
purified 40 days after the birth of Jesus. So they call it the purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so they count the 40 days from um, Christmas. And, you know, even people that will support celebrating Christmas, most all of them will say, okay, we know he wasn't born then. Um, but if they're doing like, if just look at this, how they do this. Okay, now February 1st is in bulk. It's a Wiccan and a pagan holiday, sometimes referred to as candle mass. It says here, oh, milk. Um, it originates from the Celts. It uh, symbolizes halfway point between the winter solstice, Yule, and the spring equinox, Austera. Don't you get tired of the defilement of Mary? Yes. You know, that you always see her. They always have this pagan sun around her head and things like that, and they've put, put this in here when it could not possibly have been the time of her purification. And... I was just thinking, I thought so many days about how wonderful Mary should have, would have been to be chosen to have this, the son of Almighty God. How wonderful Joseph had to be mm -hmm. that God put the son in their hands to raise him. I heard somebody uh, talking the other day on just something that um, I'd listened to other things that they'd done, and I thought they were great. And they, they had a man on there they were interviewing, and he was talking about like... Um, alchemy and and uh that you know alchemy's god uses alchemy and things like this and so anyway i i, I thought okay let's see what he, and he talked about you know well, when jesus was uh when they took him down down to egypt you know he would have been learning uh what the the egyptians did with the magicians and things like that and i thought you got to be kidding me that, that, his that, mom the, and dad the new age been, teaches that and that's that's crazy his mom and dad would have been teaching him torah yeah. <laughs> And they so, basically what they they say is they he went they was st stayed among the Egyptian Essenes. Now the Egyptian Essenes were the ones who uh, developed the Nag Hammadi. They were right in the middle of of the genesis of uh, Gnosticism. Uh, and you know if they would have went to Egypt, which they did to protect him, they would have found a Jewish community to dwell there. And he was so well versed in Torah that. At age thirteen, he was able to hold his own, and 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 surpass what the doctors of law were doing, and so they were doing their jobs of, of teaching him how to walk in Torah, not not yeah. for him to be a magician. That's exactly right, and so I kind of jumped at the at the screen at that one. So, uh, but I wanted to just bring out some of these um, these occult holidays, so that I can show you how there's a religious system in place. And the Catholic Church, right in the middle of it, of course, I believe they established a whole religious system. Um, but, you know, in, in February um, 2nd is the Groundhog Day. And so you got all these, all these things around this. And there's also um, the holiday celebrates Bridget, the Celtic fire and fertility goddess. And so that was something that I was praying about even over me because I've got a lot of Irish in my bloodlines, and so every everything I've been looking at is, Father, show me, show me anything I need to pray of, because I don't want to be one of these, um, you know, you can't operate in the Holy Spirit if you've got junk in there, and so I've just been looking and, and watching all this stuff, so you go from, okay, you go, you got Christmas, you're going 40 days, you go to, till they call it candle mess, it's actually a pagan day, you go up to February 14th, um, Valentine's Day, and then you know we've got this little spirit that they call Cupid. That he's sitting there, he's got darts, all right, but they're fiery darts. They're not darts of love, you know. <clears throat> you know, you know what the origin of Cupid is? Is that he had, and that's actually Baby Nimrod, and that uh, he was uh, so uh, exude sexuality that he was able to seduce his mother even as a baby. And, I mean, you, you go back to a lot of stuff and you, you, you search the, the origins of Neo Galli. But everything in the Catholic Church, what they did... Just took the pagan. They, they put a light veneer of Christianity over the mystery religions, and, they would, and as they would sweep across the land, nobody was converted. Nobody, nobody was preached the gospel. You know, if, if you... Take a center and you sprinkle some water on him, all you have is a wet center. Because Jesus said there had to be repentance before you could enter the kingdom. 
And so imagine you had all the priests in Rome that were part of the mystery religions. Constantine sets up his thing. And all they got to do is be sprinkled in other priests in the new religion. And so as they, as they would move through the countries, you can go to, uh, to Rome and they have what's supposed to be, you know, baby Jesus and, and uh, Mary. But that's actually Samarimus and Tammuz. And if you look at the baby, the baby's holding up three fingers, which is the trident symbol of, of Satan and, and Poseidon. Because it, it, and the, the statue of, of Peter is not Peter, it's Jupiter. Well, and like in Rome, it was um, the god of love. They, they say it was according to myth, Cupid was the son of Mercury, uh, the winged messengers of the god Venus. So it depends on whether you're talking to Rome or here or there, all these things. Yeah, Greek Babylon, it kind of amalgamated through all the different. But the Valentine's Day, there's no way you get away from the Feast of Lupercalia. And this was a feasting began with a ritual sacrifice, and uh, the Luperci cut strips called thongs of goat hide from the newly sacrificed goats, and they ran without clothes on around Palestine, or Palatine, not Palestine, whipping any women within striking distance, and then men randomly chose a woman's name from a jar. So, I mean, everything that, that you look at, they take us from one to another, they get us involved in one to another. You know that, like Groundhog Day. Everybody looks at this little rodent, and <laughs> not little rodent, big rodent. You know that he's going to determine whether we're going to have. It's all. It's all about the fertility, the goddess of spring. You know, we just came out of the stag do- god thing. You know, that's reindeer and all that <laughs> stuff. And so, um, it's, they just take us. What I'm trying to show you is is the series of events that the religious system sets up so that we'll be unable to hold the anointing. Yes. They're going to get us so full of holes, just like that little Cupid, you know, is firing those darts at you. If you, if you, and, and who doesn't do Valentine's Day? You would be thought of a horrible husband if you didn't get your wife a Valentine or something. That's what we've been taught without any, you know, years ago, there was no mention of anything like this. My goodness, if you'd ask somebody, well, where did Valentine's Day come from? They'd say, oh, well, there's a St. Valentine's, I think, or something. You know, but this is where this all came from, and, and this is what the religious system is meant to do. I mean, the Catholic Church was so effective. They just set it up, boom, boom, boom. So, so you get through this one. And, and it's all about, you know, from my perspective, it's not even theological. It's, it's more from the satanic side of it, watching what they can do with it. Because you just think, well, they couldn't do something with Valentine's Day. Oh, yes, they can. In, in anything, and this, this goes back to the origin of anything, the origin of anything is where its power lies. Mm-hmm. You cannot, that's why God said when he says, when you go into the land, do not re- acquire how that they serve their gods and say, I'll do that to, the, to Yahweh too. Why? Because you activate demons, you activate mm-hmm. uh, principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. You come in line with them when you do their stuff. It doesn't right. matter. They really don't care what you call it. They absolutely don't care. Just as long as you do them. Just as long as you do it, because that becomes an open door that gives them entrance. And, and this is something that, that I know most people don't realize, but I've watched this for 30 years almost. And I've watched how... Satan just sits back and says, okay, I'm going to gather a few more things in here. I'm going to, I'm going to watch you do this one. I'm going to watch you do this. And then when I get enough in there, I'm going to hit you, and I'm going to hit you hard. Now, a lot of people won't get hit if they do something pagan. A lot of people don't. Say, if they're, if they're, they're serving, if they're doing what Satan wants them to do, if they're not causing you any trouble, they won't get hit. But you take some people that, that are prayer warriors. You take some people that are trying to stand up and 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 uh, do what God wants them to do. He will hit them just like, just envision that little Cupid thing, just boom, 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 one arrow after another. You know, there's a, a cartoon that I can't remember if it's like Looney Tunes or something, but but they would shoot one of those cartoons, and then they'd always drink water, and you'd see this little shower coming out of all the bullet holes, you know, just like they were a fountain. And it's not... It's not funny though, because the truth is, is that's what's going on, and um, and I'll, I'll tell you just a, a a couple of things that I thought about 
you know, years ago, before I knew any of this stuff, um, I've, it was after we were married. And we were going to a faith-based church, and um, I saw a man. I, my uncle was in the hospital, so I went to visit him, and I saw a man that I knew from my hometown, and he was coming out of an elevator, and he was just so um, happy because he, he said that people were praying with him, and a preacher had come and prayed with him, and he'd been diagnosed with um, one of the later stages of cancer. And he said, I am just, I know God's going to heal me. And I said, well, I'm going to pray that too. I, I'm i going to get in here and pray. And I mean, that all the people around him, faith, you could, you could sense it, that they had faith that Jesus was our healer. And so he died. And I remember thinking, boy, God, it's so hard to understand why we're praying for people. And they, and they can't get their healing. I don't understand. And so when I found out all this stuff, I thought, I found out he was a Freemason. And I thought, okay. God may have healed him with all those prayers of faith, but Satan said, uh, no, I'm not going to let you declare the faith of God healed you because I've got this open door you don't know about. I'm going to come in, and I'm going to put the same thing back on you. Yeah, Isn't that sad? Yeah. I remember just crying when, when I heard he died. I thought, man, there's so many people praying. I heard a, somebody told me that I always get tons of, stories of horrible things after christmas especially like if it, it's it's like there's something with i don't know exactly what it is but there's something about where they sell the 12, 12 days of christmas when you get to the end of that then that's when i heart start hearing the stories of the bad things happening one of them was um and this was a freemason family a woman was giving them a bath and her little kids she took one out and somehow she came back in there and the baby had got uh, its neck caught on something that was in there. I don't know if it's the shade, you know, those little mini blinds have. I don't know what it was. They didn't tell me what cord it was, but the, it was around the neck, and it was choking. And, and the baby lived, um, but that was a Freemason family. So what? think about the, the ritual in the Freemason where they, they put the table, what do they call it, a cable toe or something around their neck. They, they put Cow a... toe or something like that. Um, well, it's a noose around yeah. their neck in one of the, the rituals. And so so see how all these things happen? And so there's no way in my mind that I've, I've watched so much of this through the years that I don't say, oh, God, you've got to help us. You've got to help us so that we can show people how the enemy's working. And see, what, what the religious spirit doesn't want us to do is all get in one accord on one of God's chosen days. <laughs> like the Feast of Tabernacles. He doesn't want us to get together on those days because he knows, man, if God's people ever get together, they got their doors closed, they're in one accord, they're, um, you know, they, they've got the, this stuff figured out about this religious system and they're leaving it and they're going to start praying and my kingdom's going to be totally ineffective. And I think that's one of the things that we miss about uh, Acts chapter 2. It says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, it was they they were they were in the upper room, they were seeking God. They had been told to wait there, and it was God's moedim. It was God's mm-hmm. appointed time. That's right. That you know God doesn't care what's on your calendar. God says I have my own. That's it. And there were ones he and and you know when I first learned about the feast, Mary, um, it grieved me that here the Creator of the universe. Put on his calendar, Mike, I guarantee you on these days, I have an appointment with you and I'm going to meet with you. And I completely, out of ignorance, ignored them. All those years, we knew nothing about it. Yeah. Knew nothing about it. I think that's why the first time we prayed over at at Ev Shabbat, uh, the Holy Spirit came in. And I mean, it was almost like a Acts chapter 2 experience. I mean, I had... And I remember turning to you and said, man, if we could ever bring this into a church service, we'd have a revival that nobody could contain mm-hmm. because God was making a point. This is my appointed time. Mm-hmm. Now you did it my way, and I'm here because I told you I was going to be here. That's right. And so so what does Satan want to do? He wants to keep us from those appointed times. I have such an anticipation in my heart over this Pentecost. 
Now, I don't know why yet. God's not revealed anything specific. I know that we're getting ready to go through perilous times. And, and this is, you know, now a lot of those falls, when we were coming up to the falls, you had tons of people saying, this is it. We're not going to have another election. We're not going to have this. I never felt like anything was going to happen. And I, and I would say, you know, I'd miss it, but I didn't feel like anything's going to happen. I thought, this isn't it yet. We're getting ready to see some stuff. And, and so we've got to be prepared. And part of, of preparation is getting, getting to that place where we're, we're getting away from what the religious system has established. Absolutely. And, and I, I think what's key, uh, you know, when John the Baptist is, is a key figure, I think, in the in the movie, because he came in the spirit of Elijah. And we know that the spirit of Elijah is going to return with Jesus' second coming, too, and I think it's going to come on the body. And he preached a baptism of repentance. And as soon as Jesus came, he said, and he said, listen, what I'm doing is I'm preparing the way of the Lord. If you have any, if anybody teaches you a way of preparing for Jesus to come and to really take over your life and to walk with him properly without repentance, it's another gospel. And every time that God moves, any legitimate, listen to me, any legitimate move of God is precipitated by a season of repentance. Right. Now, we're getting ready to enter into, I believe, probably one of the most supernatural times that we have seen since the book of Acts. The, uh, the occult are getting ready to bring out their big guns to bring the new world order. But there's one world government they're wanting and, and the whole shooting match. And so, they're, so the priesthood of darkness is going to bring out everything that they have to, to coalesce this thing. At the same time, what God wants to do is he wants to pour out his spirit. A lot of things, Mary, that, I, that is kind of commonplace when missionaries are in third world countries, even denominations that don't believe in deliverance and casting out demons, their missionaries do because they've got to do it on a regular basis. I think we're going to start seeing that in America. I think God's getting ready as, as the remnant repent and, and prepare the way of God God's getting ready to, to tear the veil that has been hiding everything because most of the church, and, and this this is something, Mary, that we get. I don't think there is uh, two or three days doesn't go by that I don't get an email from somebody around the world saying, I can't find a church that teaches mm-hmm. the word anymore. It's either woke theology, prosperity theology. I don't need another self-help thing. What I need is the kingdom of God. I need the truth of, of God's word being preached. And so many of the times they have, they have the, I, I think that the Luciferian elite have poured a lot of money uh, into certain individuals that, were, that they could basically preach another gospel. And what they do is they say, okay, and everybody looks at that and says, that's what I got to do to build a big church. They built a big church. I'm just going to mimic this. They're on television or whatever. I'm going to mimic this. And they end up believing the truth. And there, Mary, there have been many, many honorable men of God that have seen the doors of their churches closed because no one would tolerate sound doctrine anymore. And the truth is getting harder and harder to find. And I, I think that 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 is that is symptomatic of the days that we're in. Now, I think God's going to reverse that. I, oh, I think yeah, that's what's getting ready to happen. <laughs> I think that a lot of these big churches, everything this year, guys, everything that has been hidden is going to be revealed. God's mm-hmm. going to tear off the cover. And I tell you what, I think a lot of these big mega churches are going to get emptied out. Now, there, there are some what we would call mega churches that have preached the truth and won't compromise. And because of that, I, th- I think they'll flourish. But the ones that have compromised, that have created another way, mm-hmm. whether it is uh, Holy Ghost tarot cards or prophecy tarot cards or, or hyper prosperity or whatever, or, or this woke theology that's taken a hold of many of what we would um, 
in the past called this this was like the the bedrock of of evangelical mm-hmm. Christianity is now going woke because they're being taken over by communists. God's getting ready to rip everything off so that people yeah. can see right. just how bad it really is, yeah. so that they can see the true Jesus and their need for Jesus. Yeah, that's it. And there is going to Mary, I prophesy this in the name of Jesus. There is going to come out a cry across the land. Mm-hmm. I want Jesus. That's I right. want the Word of God. I want the real Jesus. And let me tell you what's going to precede that an absolute wailing of those that see the religious system and see what they put us in and it will grieve them like it grieved me and make me so angry at the kingdom of darkness that they will rise up as a mighty warrior and stand against it because this you know february 14th now this year uh, you've got the valentine's day now one thing that you can always guarantee if, if you're seeking God with all your heart, these days like Valentine's Day, you're going to feel the yuck. Now, yes. you, you can have peace in your home or your office, wherever you are, but you, you get out in the, the public yuck. and you will feel the yuck. Do you know why? Because every person that's participating in that, whether they know what it is or not, it's building power in the kingdom of darkness. And not that that's the time of year they do a wicker man, but they might as well just build a big old wicker man, light the thing on fire. Because that's the kind of power that gets built when you get that many people. Think about that. If God is, is saying to his people... You need to be in one accord. You have need of each other. I want my my people together. I want my people to be standing for the truth. You know how much power that brings when yes. God's people can do that? Okay, now think about this. How much of a defilement is it if Satan can trick a Christian into doing something that's pagan? Absolutely. You know, you and I were talking the other day just about uh, uh, spiritual curses being sent and just how much the, it thrills uh, the kingdom of darkness when they can get a Christian's lips moving and release word curses mm-hmm. at people. Yeah, there's a lot of power in that. So, so it's very common for you to feel really yucky on this kind of a day. Uh, it's the atmosphere's charged, and that's just how it is. So that's why, like, like February second at this candle mass thing, um, and then you move to Valentine's Day. Here we go again. It's it's a systematic unfolding of things. Yeah, Doc uh, Mark Doc Marquis has a wonderful, wonderful video that's still on the internet on oh, America's occult holidays, and they come in groups of 13, 13 weeks, and they'll be separated by seven weeks and six weeks. Did you know that they? And, and this is something we ran across. He brought out too, is that you know the uh, the presidential inauguration used to be in November, right after the election. They moved it to January 20th because it was a high occult holiday. Every single one of these, over and over again. Well, look at January 6th. That was one of the biggest setups we have ever seen. It was a setup. And so you would think with everybody coming into agreement on Christmas, if that's a holy day and everybody's coming into agreement and celebrating and everything like that, as vast as that celebrated, there would have been so much power that that would have been exposed. Yeah. And so, so these are, I'm just trying to show you the religious system, how they've set us up. Uh, and, now this and the, year, the church is full of spirits that are, are not the Holy Spirit and God's people. Well, and we've not driven the ites out. I, that's what I believe that this year we got to do. We got to do just like Joshua did. He goes in there and he he does what God says: drive those ites out of here. If if you want my land to be cleansed, you got to drive the ites out. If we want these temples to be cleansed, where we can be used, um, you know, it's like I was thinking about that as I woke up and I was praying this morning about the the old wine skins, and you know, you couldn't put the new wine in the old wine skin because it would burst. And I thought, we don't even have to expand and burst. We already got the holes in us that we can't hold new wine. We can't hold the Holy Spirit. It's gonna, everything's going to be pouring out of us. We need to be a vessel that can hold uh, the oil of gladness. We need to be able to hold the anointing oil so we can do what Jesus did. It's, and instead, it's, we, you know, we have, we, and some of us may have the anointing, but we also have the fly in the ointment. Because we, we've allowed a double stream. Well, I, I, I agree with you that there is plenty of anointing with great men and women of God. But I will tell you this. We are not walking the way Jesus told us to walk. No. We are not walking in the power. No. And so, so these are some of the things that I believe is, is causing that. 
you know, this year, February 14th, is Valentine's Day. It also is marking the beginning of Lent. Um, Ash Wednesday is that day that when, you know, they take the ashes and will make a little cross on your head. Um, and so, so there's going to be a combining of things right there because we know that that's the beginning of the 40 days of weeping for, for Temas. Temas. Yep. Okay, and see, this is how the Catholic Church system has been set up. And so then you've got February 13th, which I believe it was February 13th or 14th, one of those days when that original Fifty Shades of Grey movie came out that was that horrible movie that I've, I've just tried to read. I've never, of course, not seen it, but there were lots of Christian women thronging into those theaters to see that, and, and it was about bondage, if I understand it right. Like yeah. he was introduced this woman he was dating to the this H&M. room he had, yeah. and I thought, if you want to see the horrors of that, you need to talk to one of these people that's been trafficked. Yes. If, if you think that's a, a wonderful thing and that's something that you would like to engage with, you need to talk to them. But it wasn't, I don't think it's coincidence that it came out on that date because that's the spirit of that day. You know, Mardi Gras starts, um, it's uh, February 13th, and so, it, and it goes along Ash Wednesday, uh, marks the 40 day Lenten season that culminates with Easter. Okay, if you want to hear some debauchery, talk to people that go to Mardi Gras. Yeah. And this is this is supposedly the day when everybody gets all their sin out because they're getting ready to fast. They got to be good for 40 days. <laughs> is is that not the craziest, craziest thing, thing you've ever heard of? And you know when you you lap this back over into the biblical account when in the prophets was talking about how the women were weeping for Tammuz, mm-hmm. it said they were they were bowing down to the east as they were pointing toward the eastern gate which is when the sun rises. You do it in the morning as the sun is rising because it's in, in sun worship. Do you know to do that? They turned their backs on the temple of God. They turned their backs on the manifested presence of God in that temple and bowed down another direction. That's, no wonder God going, said there's abominations. That's, that's it. That's it. So this, this is the religious system that we've all got to come out of. Um, so, and you know, it, it just continues on. Um, this is all to keep, uh, it's a, an established system to keep us away with the relationship with Almighty God. Because every time we've participated in this, this is what grieved me so when I saw all this stuff. I thought every year, no telling what, I was getting ready to make a breakthrough. I, I, I was probably getting ready to make a breakthrough. And I did one of these things and I slid back. And then I was, I was building up, I was praying, I was saying, God help me, I'm so depressed, I don't know why. And I'd build up to it and I'd slide back. And so when you see this system and you see what Satan has done with it, you'll hate it. You will hate it. You will despise it and say, you evil thing, you have kept me away from the presence of God. You've kept me away from my breakthroughs. You've kept me so full of holes that I couldn't hold the presence of the Lord if I had to because I've got so many holes made by the things I've done. And the, and so then you can just see how it goes. Now, guard yourself on the 1st of May. That's Beltane. Um, and that's when the, they used to take the little kids, even at churches, and wind them around the maypole, with the pole being the phallic symbol, the, the children forming the female thing, and they do a druidic ritual. Um, then you go, uh, you know, the 4th of July. We know that that was set up by the Illuminati. Well, it's, that's because the Star Series is right over Washington, D.C., and so then, then so, so you make it through, and let's say you celebrate Easter. Okay, so you're gonna gonna have a little time there, and maybe you can you can build up a little strength or something. Oh yeah, we just celebrated the Fourth of July, and now we're getting ready to go into Pentecost. How much power have we got? Can God pour His Spirit out on us when we're in that condition? No. It, is it a surprise to you that with all of these traditions and these things we've done all of these years, that the church has declined and declined and declined? Absolutely. You know, when we look at what, what, what Satan always does, and this is, this is his, his way of operating, any move that really started with God, and we, we can see this, uh, let's, let's take John Wesley. Okay, now John Wesley, he was, being, he, he was going over to America as, as a missionary for the Anglican Church and uh, ran into some of the saints from the, the, the uh, uh, Moravian revival, and that ship was about to sink. It was the worst storm they ever saw. 
And these Germans are singing and praising God. And so John Wesley says, these Germans are idiots. They don't know that we're all about to die. And he goes over and he says, uh, don't you know we're about to die? And the guy looked him in the eyes and said, we, just, we die daily. We're, we're here serving God. And it brought such conviction that later on he got saved. The reason that his movement was called Methodist is there were so many things in his devotion to God that was a part of his daily routine to get it all in, all his prayer time, all his worship time, all, all his study time, he had to have a methodology to, to fit it into his day mm-hmm. because he was so on fire for God, as well as sometimes, sometimes he'd preach four or five times a day. All of that, and look what it has, spiritual entropy has kicked in, and look where it is now. The enemy, any, and there have been great churches and great moves of God that because we weren't aware of what religious spirits would do, religious spirits suck the kingdom of God out of a room. It sucks the energy of God out of a room. It it replaces it with the works of men. And, you know, do you know how you can tell a religious spirit, Mary? It puts its traditions that it's established over the written word of God. Mm -hmm. And it will cause people to reach outside of the written word to justify what they're doing, even when it plainly says in Scripture, this is the way that you should do it. Uh, people do that with Christmas. People do that with a lot of things. You know, we, we, we don't realize the, the reason that we have 11 o'clock Sunday worship services when you go back in history. It's because Martin Luther kept on, as he got older, they were, his, he was a German. They would go and they would argue theology at the guest house on Saturday night and drink beer. And uh, it got harder and harder for him to get up at Sunday morning. And so finally he moved the worship services to, from, uh, he started like 6 o'clock in the morning. It was like when the Catholic Church would hold Mass and he would, they would kind of mirror the same thing. Uh, he eventually moved it to 11 because in his old age he couldn't get up and from his hangover or whatever. So we have 11 o'clock church services because Martin Luther in his old age couldn't hold his liquor. And I mean, it's just when you when you go back and look at the origins of anything, just how crazy uh, the things are that we do, and and churches have split. God begins to move, and that church splits because it would rather have its tradition than what God's doing in that church. Well, that religious spirit's got a hold of all of us. Yes, I mean we've all been in a religious spirit system. Yeah. It's kind of like saying, you know, I, I don't believe America is Babylon, but we are definitely in a Babylonian system. We're following Babylonian spirits, Egyptian spirits. I remember years ago I was sitting in a colloquium, and we had scholars from around the world, and we got to talking about the two golden calves set up by the north so that, uh, so that the northerners wouldn't go back down and worship God in Jerusalem like they were supposed to. They set up their own holidays. They set up their own places. And he looked at me and he says, yeah, and we've done the same thing today. It's called the Catholic Church and the Protestant Church. And uh, the guy was very prophetic. It's like when he turned, there was the fire of God in his eyes. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the Protestant Church is only a half skip and a jump from the Catholic Church. And, uh, and, you know, I've I've even seen in, in parts of the charismatic movement, they were kind of romancing the Pope. Let me tell you something. When you understand the times we're in, I, I think we're going, we're going to see an acceleration of Islam worldwide. I, I think that's part of, of uh, and Islam is just another version of the mystery religions, and there's, there's, we can get into a whole lot of that. But I, I think eventually the Catholic Church is going to amalgamate into the Muslim church, I, I saw a video years ago, and it talked about all these world-famous sites that literally on one side of the street you had a big Muslim mosque, on the other side of the street you had a Catholic, uh, a Catholic shrine. And the guy says, forget about this being Catholic and this being Muslim. He said, just look on the symbols. on their, And you know what? You had the crescent moon and the stars on both. It was the same mm-hmm. system, just different flavors. And eventually they're going to go in together. And I think what, what they call Isha or Jesus is probably going to end up being, the Pope's going to end up being the false prophet that ends up converting to Islam. And then he's going to say, this is the way. Because in, in, in Muslim prophecy, they say that when Jesus returns, he's going to call the world to Islam. And any Christian does not convert to Islam, he's going to cut their heads off. 
That that's that's the when when a Muslim talks about Jesus, that's the Jesus they're talking about. And he's going to say, "I lied. I was not the Son of God." We're, we're, we're going to see that in this day. We're, we're going to see an amalgamation of all the mystery religions coming together under one banner. That is the one world religion. Mm-hmm. That is the one world government. They're preparing the stage for the return of the son of perdition, of Nimrod. And, you know, you know there used to be the, the old saying, all, all um, roads lead to Rome. No, they don't. They lead to Babylon. Nimrod is the cornerstone of the mystery religions. Now there were others that built upon it and took it. You know, and I think it. I think it reached its supremacy under Nebuchadnezzar. But Mary, when you look at uh, you look at the statue that Mary had the vision, it was Nimrod, then the Medo Persian, then the Grecian, then the two sides of Rome. And we saw a wonderful presentation there day where he has identified where it talked about the miry clay and the feet. In the Hebrew, that word mixed is Arab. Mm-hmm. That that you're, you're gonna you're gonna try to mix the the Muslim into the mystery religions, but it's not gonna quite mingle and mix right. But that entire statue is the linear timeline of the mystery religions, and the Catholic Church is right in the middle of it. And I've kind of wondered. A lot of people said that the two legs, one represented because you know Rome, the, the Catholic Church split into Eastern Orthodox, Western Orthodox, and I've wondered if it's been that or maybe it's Catholic and, and Protestant. Because there are, there are a lot of Protestant churches that are not what I would consider evangelical, that, that they do not believe in the born-again experience. All you got to do is, you know, you as a baby can be sprinkled, and now you're, now you're in. You're in like Flint, right? But you didn't even make the decision to follow Christ. Right. I, I, I believe in a believer's baptism. That's, yeah. that's what we see in the Word of God. You have to be old enough that you decide I'm following Christ. And I'm receiving what he did for me. And I, you have to be old enough to repent of your sins. That, right. that's, that, that is the whole apostolic testimony that we see throughout the word of God. And so we're, there, there, there is a division coming in the days ahead. There are those that are going to follow after this religious spirit that are going to double down on everything. Yeah, I believe that. I believe it's going to be a, a big, I think that there's going to be a, a lot of anger Mixed in with it. Oh, yeah, because it, it goes back to the spirit of Cain. Cain was the first priesthood, priest of darkness. Mm-hmm. He, he drew from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He decided for himself, I don't care what God has said and required. I'm going to do it my way. And then he got mad when God rejected it, and so he killed the brother that was faithful to the instruction of God. Well, and that's all. That's what this is: is we've got to get back to the instruction. Yeah. And the religious spirit takes us away from it. It sets up a system to where where we're taken away from it, and then we can't flow with the kingdom. And so, um, I I am not angry at at anything other than the kingdom of darkness. Yeah. But my my prayer is, Father, reveal these religious spirits so that we can see them so clearly. Yes. All of us, Father, any deception, reveal it to us so that we can walk according to your word. Um, you know, we're all subject to being yeah. deceived. We're all, all subject to um, hearing the wrong thing. Not, and so, so it's, it's an okay prayer yes. if we pray, Father, reveal yes. the truth. The truth triumphs over yeah. The lies of the enemy, the, the systems of the enemy. And I'm just asking that your kingdom would come and your will would be done on earth as and, it is And, you know, I heaven. can throw into this mix that there's large portions of the Hebraic heritage movement that have embraced their religious spirit faster than any other group I've ever seen in my life. I've, I've seen it. That they are guilty of leaving their first love. If mm-hmm. you do not have a burning fire inside of your spirit for Messiah Jesus and that everything revolves around him, you have left your first love. Love, and you've given in to a pharisaical spirit that will not allow the Holy Spirit to move. It will lead you away from Christ. It'll lead you to the place where you first deny Jesus. You know, you, and we, we've seen this over the years. First, they have a problem with the Apostle Paul. Then they have a problem with the Gospels. Then they have a problem with Jesus, so they deny Jesus. Eventually, Mary, and I've seen a lot of them do this, and I've talked to other church leaders that have seen the same thing. Then they, then they have a problem with Moses. 
And so now they deny Moses. They end up becoming atheists. That's it's the, it's just it's it's like a it's like a toboggan. It is. And that's shoo. a religious spirit leading them straight to hell. Yeah, because atheism is I'm God. There's no God. I'm God. Well, that's being taught in colleges. It is. You know, it's all about you. <laughs> and guys, we we're, we're going to enter into time now. Any time. That this is one of the things that we're learning. Any time that whether it's a celebration of one of these pagan days with a Christian veneer over the top of it, God convicts you of it and you repent. After repenting, you bind up that spirit and you command it to mm-hmm. leave you in the name of Jesus. Yes. And I, I think and then fill you with the Holy Spirit for that left a void. Yes. <laughs> and fill with the Holy Spirit. And it's the same thing when God is dealing with some of our stinking attitudes, what we haven't realized. It's not just the flesh. There's a spirit behind it that is that is empowering the flesh whether it's a spirit of lust a spirit of infirmity i mean there's there are a lot of different spirits anytime that the holy spirit brings these up you repent and then we we have got to be faithful israelites taking the land when when you look at the 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 history of israel and I, i believe that that it's actual history but god is so awesome he gives us the bible says all these stories were given to us for our example while we were in bondage, all the ites, the Nephilim, the Raphaim, and when you, you look at the Pezusites and, and Jesusites and all these others, when you look up their original name, a lot of times it's works of the flesh is, is what they mean. That filled, that filled our, our, our holy land, our, our, our temples. And it, it, guys, it's time for us to cross the Jordan, to roll up our sleeves and kick some, some demon rear end. It's time for us to clean house. It's time for us to turn over the money changers' tables. It's time for us to knock over the altars that were erected by these spirits that got yeah, entrance into it. our lives. Preach it. It, it is time to clean house. We can either be like Josiah and return back to the ways of God because God's instruction has been, has been rediscovered, and he went on every high place. You see, they, well, what's a high place? Maybe it's a stronghold. It's a, it's a high elevated place. Every high place, there was a Canaanite altar. There was, there was an altar that opened up a portal for the Spirit to work. You know what? When you repent, you bring the blood of Jesus over and you say, Now, Spirit, I bind you and every supportive spirit that you use to control my life and to get me mad when I shouldn't get mad, when you got me to sin when I shouldn't be sinning, when you, when you taught me these stinking attitudes and you taught me these lies. Not only do I repent of you, but I now I am asking God to give me a holy hatred. Yes, glory to God. For everything about you. Mm-hmm. Now get out in Jesus' in name. In Jesus' name. Man, that, that's how you clean house. That's it, and that's that's what this is the season of. If you want to say it's a season, this is a season of cleaning house. And I think, I think every one the, of us, every every listener that, that's listening, if you love Jesus, you want to see His name lifted high. Yes. You want to see when He says that there's going to be greater works than what what was done. Can you imagine that? We can't even get up to the works level, and and so. This is part of the refiner's fire that's going to get us there so we can walk this out to where the world can be falling apart around us. But when we walk in, Almighty God goes with us. Yeah. His power goes with us. It's not about us. It's who is, is we've made a place to, for him to yeah. come with us. And if you're called to the fivefold ministry, it's time for you to get a holy zeal and say, you know what, I'm not going to allow any other anointing Mm-mm. but the anointing of the Holy Mm-mm. Spirit in my life. I forbid to double stream. Right now, all the young prophets, all the prophets that I do have respect for, all every one of them are saying, it's time to return to holiness. Mm-hmm. It's time to clean house. Yeah. Because you do not want a fly in the apothecary's anointment oil. You don't want the devil to throw Beelzebub in the midst of that. And I, I write about this in my books, and you and I have seen it, that you have somebody that, let's say, is, is gifted in, in the gift of prophecy. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they start out that prophetic word, and man, you're getting a witness in your spirit. Oh, my goodness, this is so true. And then about the last 20% of it, they veer off to the right or to the left. And you think, dear Lord, what happened? That was that secondary anointing kicked in to taint what God well, was saying. A lot saying. of time it's wounds. Yes. If you have a wound from childhood, um, I think go back to when you're in the womb. Um, a lot of times prophets are born with cord wrapped around their neck. Satan's trying to kill them before they're even born. Yeah. And um, 
you know, there's all kinds of things that wounds that are there. And if there's an unhealed wound, there's there's an opening. There's where where a spirit of um, of pain, all kinds of spirits can inhabit that. That's why I would just say to any Christian, you know, whether you think anything's happened to you or not, let's just do let's do a preventative. Um, assessment of ourselves and just say now god i know i've struggled with this show me the root of that what yeah. what happened to me why why is that there because um there's a, there's just all kinds of spirits that the, the enemies use they're all over the place you know people have always said oh you see demons everywhere they are everywhere they are <laughs> and, uh. they, they, and they've been given great power and many of them and they're walking amongst us because of this stuff right here. Yeah. We've been tricked. We've been deceived. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Oh, These the holidays tip. are just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, doctrines of men, anything to take us away. Re- mm-hmm. Putting the traditions of men over the Word of God. There is, if, there, if there's anything that tries to usurp the instruction of God, Mary, there is a spirit of the devil behind it. Yeah. And, you know, when you begin this cleaning process, one of the things the devil will try to do, he'll try to throw down your, his trump card for you. And all of a sudden, this hurt or whatever comes up in you. And it's like, God, I'm trying to clean. But the more I try to clean house, I'm mad as hell, okay? The devil just showed you where the wound is. You got to forgive. Mm-hmm. And once you forgive, you command, because there is a spirit holding that wound and it can be a spirit of unforgiveness yes spirit of unforgiveness a spirit of injustice i mean there's a lot of different things you cast that out and once you cast that out you say now father i plead uh, the bomb of gilead into that for healing and and you may have to do that a few times you do that until then until that wound is gone because all the devil has to get you to do is the moment god begins to move he brings up that wound. You mm-hmm. get in the flesh. Right. When you get in the flesh, you're in the devil's territory. Yep, you are. And I've learned that the hard way. I'm, I'll use me as an example. Everything I've learned, I've learned the hard way. because, Well, mostly because I didn't know. But, I mean, I really had to work yeah. and to, to try to get to Because my goal is I don't want to be some a vessel that the enemy's occupying. I don't want to be a place in my life that, that he can move, and, and I don't want him making me sick. No. I mean, he, he makes people sick. If he's got an inroad to do it, and I'm not saying every sickness is because there's something wrong. I'm not saying that. There's just things happen in the body. But a lot of times, if he's got an inroad, he wants you sick. He wants you with migraines. He wants you to where you can't even lift your head to pray. Yeah. When you when you look at the biblical account, and when and what's interesting, there's no expelling of demons anywhere in the Old Testament, because only Messiah brought the anointing to do it. Okay, so I mean, Jesus talked more about the devil in in the four Gospels than is in the entire Old Testament. Why he brought the solution? Okay, and for one person. He would heal them. He would not cast out a devil because the devil wasn't behind the sickness. It could have been uh, just a simple illness. It could have been a disease. It could have been, let's say, an accident. We yeah. know we, we don't know. But there were also times that there's no way of getting this person healed if I don't deal with the spirit. Should that this woman be loosed, mm-hmm. whom Satan has bound these 14 right. years, okay? Right. And so he was able, he had the, the discernment to differentiate between physical illness or physical malady and a spirit behind mm-hmm. it. And we know this, that's why not all sickness and disease is caused by a spirit. And but there's uh, lots of times people go to doctors and they, they just say, well, we can't find anything wrong. Yeah. But I've got this this horrid pain. I mean, I you know, and I remember I told you guys that about that time I was just having this horrible pain in my side. I mean, binge over kind of pain. And and I kept praying and I'd think I I I can't deter I don't feel sick just every once in a while and um then you know, I'd pray and pray and, and finally it just stopped and I said, "Well, God, what was it?" And he said that there was a a witch that was practicing voodoo down in um, New Orleans yeah where they had the Katrina and said she died in Katrina now if I'd known more back then then I would have known to ask forgiveness for the sins of anything being sent to me and stuff like that but I'm sure she had a voodoo doll with probably some of my hair from the many beauticians I went to that were witches that I found out later you know that that's one of the because then we have to set up protocols and 
one of the things that I have read that many what I call balanced delivery ministers do is the first thing they ask you, okay, you have this sickness. What is the doctor saying? Is there a natural cause? Mm -hmm. Or is it, yeah, you have it. We don't know why. We don't know how to fix it. There is no scientific or medical reason for you to have that. Now, when you're in that kind of situation, it's either a spirit or a curse being sent at you. And and so we, we have to use wisdom in these things. But I tell you what, um, there, there there's a group of guys doing deliverance right now, and most of it's in the church, that uh, mm-hmm. they go and start praying for people and, and ministers are manifesting demons. Because the enemy has had such an inroad because we have not been taught holiness. Let me tell you something. There's, there are two great mysteries in the Word of God. The mystery of iniquity. Everybody knows about that one. But we forget about there's the mystery of godliness. That there's, there's, there's something that God wants to do that he's wanting to reveal. Oh, and there's anointing on what you're saying. That was almost like a holy, a holy hush moment. Um, there's, there's something the to two, that you're probably going to, God's going to show you some we, stuff. We talk about the armor of God, but you know, there's, there was always a cushioning that was between armor, you and the armor so that it wouldn't chafe you and everything. You know what that cushioning is? Holiness. Mm. You see, we, we always, this, the armor that we put on is the armor of Messiah. You cannot put on his armor where his character has not been established. So if I'm going, I have to first put on Christ. And you see this in Ephesians. He instructs them over and over again, put on Christ, put on Christ, put off the old, the old man, put on Christ. It wasn't until he dealt with getting off the old and putting on Christ that he ever mentioned the armor. Because mm-hmm. the armor can only go where Christ has been established. That's good. That's good. Well, and then, guys, we're we're getting ready to enter into a season of of both great darkness, great light, and great spiritual battle. And so, it's time for us to get our areas of operation cleared of the enemy mm-hmm. and perimeters established in ourselves, because there is there is spiritual territory on the inside of you, demons. Remember, when Jesus said, when when demons are cast out, they go into dry places. And then they go back and say, I'm going to go back to my house. They viewed you as their house. You know what? We have a change of ownership. The landlord, the landlord is Jesus, and he wants to give an eviction notice. Get out of my temple. That's it. Get out of my people. You see, before we can come out of Babylon, we got to get Babylon out of us. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Then we can stand against it. But, but in, in our weakened states, in our spirit-infested states, we can't stand against no. the enemy. And I yes. learned that early on. I mean, we're, I, you know. We're learning it now because well, I, I think God's calling us deeper into some things of him. And so he's saying, listen, you may have gotten out some big things, but there's still there's some little lights you still need to get rid of, and there's some things you need to get rid of. I'm chasing them down. <laughs> I'm going to chase them down. I'm on the hunt, okay? <laughs> because, you see, I... I, I want Jesus because he was completely obedient to the Father. And he would only do what the Father said he would do. There was no other spirit that was motivating him. It says that he was given the spirit, the anointing, without measure. He's my example. Mm-hmm. When he could say, Satan has nothing in me, that's our goal. Devil, if you're going to attack, you're going to attack on the outside because I've driven the ites out of my promised land. And see, that's when we can can truly get the harvest in. Because yes. Satan's done everything he can through the educational system, through the churches, through anything to drive the younger people away. But God's getting ready to bring a harvest in. And I'm, I can tell you from my point of view, they're worth fighting for. They're worth fighting these ites for. They're, they're worth going through some fasting, going through some cleansing, so we can help these babies get to be this great army yeah. that God's got planned. And we need to realize the stupid stuff they're teaching in school, they're, they're no longer, it's not reading and writing and arithmetic, they're programming you yeah, to walk in are. Babylon. Uh, I got a, an email this week from a guy that he's written a series of books uh, that 
teach us back to the basics, but he said in, in Los Angeles, the teachers are going through this program to teach them how to deal with society, and there's this power wheel of this is the power structure. And it said that white, straight, skinny people are the oppressors. That's what, that's what they're teaching the teachers that teach the children. Now, you know, I don't fall into that because neither one of us are skinny. No, we're not. <laughs> so it's, it's only if you're, I guess, if you're a skinny mini, you're an oppressor. That's but to cause division. It, it is to cause division because it is deconstructionism. Well, right now, the enemy is trying to deconstruct everything out of the American society, especially any ethics that were put in there by Almighty God. And so you know what we need to do? It's time for us to deconstruct Babylon out of us. That's it. And God's raising up an army with every color. Yes. And we're all going to walk and not break ranks. We're going to be in, in step together with the Holy Spirit. We need each other. We do. We can't, we can't function without each other. No. And some of, some of my favorite preachers aren't white. And a lot of mine aren't. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of mine. And, I, I mean, I, I, have, I have seen the power of God move through uh, every every single thing, but except maybe pink polka dotted, okay, because that doesn't exist. But I, guys, we, we need to get over the color of our skin. There's one race, the human race. Now, there are different ethnic groups. And they have specific giftings that yes. are so important to for the body to function together. Every tribe, every tongue yeah. will come into the kingdom. Because Jesus, the Lamb, is going to receive the reward of his suffering mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. I, I remember years ago, and I, I want to end with this, I've only had a few of what I would call real Holy Spirit visions. There's only been a few. But whatever you see into the spirit realm, the colors are real. It's more real than what we're seeing here. It, it's, it's like seeing in, in 12D. I mean, it, this, this, everything is more vibrant. It's alive. And, and I was praying one day, and God showed me the mercy seat in heaven. And I saw the blood of Jesus on the mercy seat. And the Holy Spirit said, listen. You see, the Bible says the blood of Jesus speaks better things than that of Abel. And I heard the blood of Jesus. And it said, I will have a people and they will be holy. I will have a people, and they will be holy. The blood of Jesus is crying out right now. I will have a people, and they will be holy. And they will, they're, they're going to wipe off the stench of Egypt and yes. Babylon off yes. of them. And they're going to walk in the ways of God. And they're going to be filled with the Spirit of God. And they're going to be an army that will only answer to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And they will yield to no other spirit. And the words that they say will be the words that heaven is saying. You know, what, what I have found, and we, we, we marvel at the miracles of Jesus, but he said, I don't do anything unless I see the Father first doing it in heaven. I don't speak anything until, until I see him speaking in heaven. Remember him saying, Lord, let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. When you speak there and I echo it here, heaven comes down and mm -hmm. fills it. Mm -hmm. When... Jesus says that one needs to be free, and you say this one needs to be free. Heaven makes sure they're free. That's right. When we worship, you know, do you know what has ever made a difference in a worship service? Sometimes you have worship services. It's just like the power of God and the presence of God just comes, and sometimes you don't, you, I, don't, I don't understand. We sang the same songs last week, and we sang them this week, and all of a sudden the power of God is here. It's because this week, you see, there's worship always going on in heaven. Right. And when we follow the Holy Spirit, what they're singing yeah. up there, we yeah. start singing down here, and so heaven can't mm -hmm. help but come down here. That's right. Boy, guys, it's time for heaven to come down. That's right. We're praying for it. I believe God's getting ready to do mighty miracles. Yes. We love you guys, by the way. We love you praying guys. Praying for you. We, we know that God's going to move in your life. Father, I ask that you would release an anointing in every remnant member. Father, to hunt down the ites in their life. 
Father, to tag them, bag them, and to cast them out and to yes. replace it with the kingdom of God. Feel Father, we declare Spirit. open hunting season on the yites in our lives. Father, let every demon bow its knee and be cast out. Yes, in Jesus' name. Let them confess that Jesus is Lord as they're being cast out of his temple. It's not their house, it's his yeah. house. And Father, we declare that your house will be clean, your house will be holy, and your house will be filled with your power and your spirit in this season. In Jesus' name. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.